This is lesson six in module four. In this lesson, we'll be using a protractor to measure angles and to distinguish between angle measurement and length of the arc. We're going to start by drawing a circle. And next to it, also a circle, but a smaller one. Now both of these circles, even though they're different sizes, they both have 360 degrees. So let's call this circle angle A, uh, circle A, and this circle B. So let's start circle A at zero degrees. We're gonna go around the circle, all the way around, back to where we started. We will have gone 360 degrees on this circle. Similarly, on circle B, if we start at zero degrees, and we go all the way around the circle back to where we started, we've gone 360 degrees. So although the circles are different sizes, they both have 360 degrees, as do all circles. Let's divide this first circle A into four equal size parts, like we've done before. We're also gonna divide circle B into four equal size parts. And we know when we divide something into four equal size parts, each part is one fourth of the whole. So this is one fourth of this circle. This is one fourth of circle B. We also know if the entire circle is 360 degrees, then this angle, which is one fourth of 360 degrees, would have to be 90 degrees. So additionally for circle B, this, er, this angle, which is one fourth of 360 degrees, would also be 90 degrees. So let's label some points so we can distinguish these two angles. Let's call this one DEF and this one GHI. So despite the difference in size of the two circles, angle D, E, F is equal to angle G, H, I. Now if we look at a different part of these circles, the arc, which is the part of the circle between the two rays that form the angles on A and B. We call this the arc. And we can see for a circle A, if we took this arc and stretched it out as a straight line, and took this arc and stretched it out as a straight line and matched them up, we would see that A would be considerably longer than B. So we said this was the angle measurement That's the degrees in the angle itself. And then the second measurement it, that we're looking at is length of the arc. So we see that the length of the arc of arc A is greater than the length of the arc B. So although these circles are two different sizes, when we divide them into equal size pieces, those pieces will be equal size angles. However, the outside measure of the arc may differ when the two circles are of different sizes. Let's move on and look at a protractor. Now this protractor looks a little different than the protractor that we used before. For one, I think you'll notice that this is a half a circle instead of a full circle. And additionally, for each of the numbers that are written, there's two sets of numbers. And if we look at our numbers, we'll see that the outside numbers start with zero and move in a clockwise fashion around and end with 
180. The inside numbers start with 100, I mean with 0, and they move in a counterclockwise fashion around and also end with 180. So 180 plus 180 is 360. So we can kind of think of the protractor as a circular protractor folded in half when we have both sets of numbers. So how do we know which numbers to use? Well, what we need to do is before we even look to read numbers, we need to examine the uh, angle and decide if it's acute or obtuse. So let's look at this angle. So we would line up the base of the protractor along one of the angle, one of the rays of the angle, and then we look at the second ray. And if we look at this, we'll see clearly that this is an acute angle. So this is acute, and remember that acute angles are less than 90 degrees. So remembering that 90 degrees is a right angle, which would be here, we see that this is considerably less than that, so this is an acute angle. So let's look at the two numbers that the second ray goes through. We have 40 and we have 140. Well, the only one of those two numbers that's less than 90 degrees is 40 degrees. So this angle measures 40 degrees. Okay, let's look at another one. Now, let's say that our initial angle looks like this. Again, we're going to line up our protractor along one of the rays. And let's say now the second ray looks like this. Okay, again, we're going to start by deciding if this angle is acute or obtuse. Well, we see our 90 degrees, which would be our right angle, and we see that this angle is greater than that. So we know that this angle is obtuse, which means that it's greater than 90 degrees. and less than 180. So let's look at the two numbers it might be. It might be 50 or it might be 130. Well, of those two numbers, the one that is greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 has to be 130. So this angle here is 130 degrees. So all we have to do with our protractor is line one of the rays along the base of the protractor. Some protractors have a little hole here where you can line up the vertex of the angle. And then you see where the second ray goes. You decide if the angle is obtuse or acute, and you see which of the two numbers is the appropriate one. So let's try this with our problem set. So. For this, you're going to be using a protractor to measure the angles and then record the measurements in degrees. Now, if we look at 1A, we can see that the rays on this angle are really small. So unless you have a teeny, teeny, tiny protractor, you're going to need to use your straight edge and extend the rays out beyond the edge of your protractor. Use a straight edge to do that, and then once you have rays that are long enough to measure the angle, then determine if the angle is acute or obtuse, and which of the numbers applies to this angle. So go ahead and measure angle A. Okay, if for an angle A you got 36 degrees or close to that, then you did this correctly. You might have gotten 37 or 35, that's fine, as long as it's within 
five degrees one way or the other, then it's a correct measurement. Angle B now is facing the opposite direction, but you do the same thing. You line up the base of the protractor with one angle, one ray of the angle. You extend the lines as far as you need to extend them and then read off the appropriate number. So try angle B. Okay. Angle B is also 36 degrees. Okay, moving on, try C. Okay, you probably saw just by looking at it that angle C is a 90 degree angle, but if you took your protractor to check, you can see this is definitely a 90 degree angle. Try D. So even though D is kind of tilted to the side, as long as you line up the base with the base of the protractor, you'll see that this is also a 90 degree angle. Okay, stop the video and try E. This angle is also a 36 degree angle. Stop and try F. Now this angle is obtuse, so you would be reading the larger of the two numbers that the second ray passes through, and the measurement should be 155 degrees. Try G. G is also 155 degrees. H, once again, is a 90 degree angle. Try I. And again, probably just by looking at it, you can see that this is a 90 degree angle. And finally, try J. And J is a 150 degree angle. And that's the end of lesson six.